Coming up on Discover Oklahoma, we're road tripping RV style and doing a little antiquing, plus some chicken fried steak you've just got to check out. Hi and welcome to Discover Oklahoma. I'm Jennifer Reynolds. And I'm Dean O'Lally. Today we're coming to you from the P-Bar Farm in Hydro, just outside of Weatherford. Of course, we're here to celebrate fall. Pumpkins, corn mazes, that's the name of the game this time of year. And here at the P-Bar, take a look at what they've done. A corn maze in the shape of the logo for the Oklahoma Tourism and Recreation Department. How cool is that? We'll have more on how you and your family can see this and experience a lot more fun coming up. But first, of course, fall is the perfect time of the year mm -hmm. to pack up everyone in an RV and explore and discover our great state. Our friends at Floyd's RV helped Tina McGarry and her family do exactly that. This is their report from McGee Creek State Park. For 45 years, folks have trusted Floyd's RV with their travel and recreation. What we've chosen to do is specialize in the vehicles that, of course, are the most affordable ones, easiest to pull you know, the most versatile units that are on the market. And plus, we carry the number one brands like Cougar, which is the number one brand in the state of Oklahoma, but also the entire United States. So again, over 45 years, we have I wouldn't say we've perfected it, but we've definitely brought it down to, you know, a good science. And that good science is just what my family needs. We're rookies when it comes to RVs. We need something easy, functional, and family friendly. The one that we're going to be taking today is a 28-foot bunkhouse, a passport, lightweight trailer, 2015. Great to sleep, you know, five to six people in it. Pulls down the road great. Uh, one of the best-selling trailers in the United States. We traveled to beautiful McGee Creek State Park in southeast Oklahoma, near Atoka. After pulling in and a few minutes setting up, the passport gave us all the comforts of home. The passport that we carry has, of course, a stove, refrigerator, oven, sink, um, microwave. Again, you could pretty much just put all your food in there and just like you would at home, you know, be able to park somewhere, water heater, you know, anything and everything that you can do within your home, you can do within the, uh, the Passport Ultra Sport. This is my kind of camping. It was easy and convenient fixing dinner in the kitchen and just nice gathering around the table and eating as a family. While outside, we enjoyed stunning scenery and all the beauty our great state has to offer. McGee Creek State Park sits along the edge of the Washita Mountain Range. Well, this park is uh, about 5,000 acres in size with a 3,800 acre lake. We have an 8,900 acre natural scenic area located on the northeast end of the lake. Where, um, People come up and do horseback riding, hiking, mountain biking. And uh, one of the premier bass fishing locations in the southeast. It's been called one of Oklahoma's best trophy lakes. And of course, my family wanted to give it a try. Large mouth, small mouth, Kentucky bass, um, crappie, sand bass, all the catfish species and perch. Well, we didn't have much luck fishing, but it was nice spending time together on the beach. The kids splashed in the water and got to play in the sand. A great break, just slowing down and enjoying nature and each other. No phones, no games. We took in the beauty around us. We even learned about a unique attraction at McGee Creek. Well, the Cabbage Head Rock is a, is a huge rock that is extended in the air about 20 feet, and at the bottom, it's just a very small stem of a rock that holds it up. It looks like a large mushroom. Looks like it would fall over at any time. It's been there for years and years and years. From the splendid scenery to the gorgeous wildlife, McGee Creek has so much to offer. The quiet beauty draws about 400,000 visitors a year. First and foremost, the, the, uh, the people in this area are as friendly as you'll find anywhere. Uh, you come here, expect to see friendly folks. Expect to have a good time. You're going to find a clean park. Uh, you're going to find the staff that's uh, uh, dedicated to this park. They 
they put their souls in here and you'll know it if once you meet the staff and, and visit with them a little bit, you'll understand that it's more than a job to these folks. Uh, they take some ownership in this park and it shows. And a great campfire to end our day. Let me tell you, we've had the perfect family day here. The park is beautiful. We've had fun, loads of activities. This mom is tired. I'm ready to go snuggle into that RV and get a good night's sleep. At McGee Creek State Park, I'm Tina McGarry, Discovering Oklahoma. A big thank you to our partners at Floyd's RV for making that story possible. There's still time to plan your family's outdoor getaway this fall. Log on to our website, TravelOK.com, and click on Request Free Brochures to get a copy of our Outdoor Recreation Guide. One of the best things about Oklahoma is its diversity. For instance, you have Tina and family in southeastern Oklahoma RVing. And now Quintran takes us to the heart of downtown Oklahoma City for a story with a little bit of history and a whole lot of classical music making. For more than a century, she serves as a landmark. The historic Skirvin Hotel sits in the heart of downtown Oklahoma City. The Skirvin welcomes business travelers and tourists, and here visitors will also find an artist in residence. There is, um, there is a little bit of um, you know, mystery and almost illusion um, with what I do. Arsenio Skorbishli is a violin maker. I think um, now is a good time to be here in Oklahoma City. A graduate of the Chicago School of Violin Making, Arsenios returned to Oklahoma in 2012. The Skirvin welcomed him as its featured artist in residence and set up studio space inside the hotel. Having a violin maker in a residency like this is, is fairly unusual. The studio space is open with wide windows, an open view of Arsenios at work. It's common for people to either stop outside the window and you know, sort of peer in and look and see. Um, you know, so I always wave at them, and occasionally people will pop in and um, ask what I'm doing and ask to you know ask questions, look around, and uh, share stories about how you know like their family has had music in their lives or you know some, something like that or how they used to play when they were little or something. And so. The space is really great in that regard because it gets um, sort of my, uh, my craft out into uh, a more public light, um, whereas most shops are, you know, sort of tucked away in a smaller, smaller space out of the way, and you only sort of find them if you need to. There are a couple of violin shops in the state, very few violin makers. Introduced to the cello at the age of 10, Arsenios has been interested in string instruments ever since. Repairing restoring, and now his passion is making them. The uh, tops are always made of spruce, uh, some variety of spruce. For the most part, you will use maple for the back, the sides, and the neck of the instrument. Sort of a, an interesting engineering type of problem, I guess, uh, because it's this thing made of wood, and it changes with humidity, it changes over time. I think what I like about, uh, about doing my job is that it is something that's it's very tactile. Um, every step of it is uh, hands-on, um, you know, so I'm doing, doing this by hand um, with mostly hand tools, the slow way, if you will. Doing that, you typically, in my experience, you would get a better product. There are no two instruments alike. Each has its own sound. Each musician has her own style. As a violin maker, um, what I am, you know, what I kind of see myself doing mostly is giving um, a, a trained musician a tool to do what they want to do with it, to help someone else um, express and say something. As an artisan residence, Arsenios is able to share his craft. It's a craft he hopes to help grow in downtown Oklahoma City. People always, you know, ask me, so this is a dying art. Um, I wouldn't call it that at all. Um, the uh, violin making is, uh, right now anyway, is a very exciting time, I think, to be a violin maker. Um, you know, because the, the best makers in, like in the world today are probably the best makers that the world has seen. There's a lot more like science and research that have gone into what makes an, an instrument sound good and some of that has been able to be used to, you know, to, to help with the production of instruments. Um, and also I think that we're just generally having sort of like a, a renaissance type period. Um, where we have, there's a, a, good, a good deal, um, a relatively high amount of um, attention to the industry. I, I think what I do fits very well um, here in the Skirvin Hotel. Oklahoma City's been very receptive to what I do. 
Plan your trip to Oklahoma City to see the Skirvin's artist in residence and a host of other attractions on our website, TravelOK.com. And while you're there, you might want to take just a moment to request for free, of course, your copy of the Fall Foliage Guide. And when the leaves change colors, you'll want a copy to map out the perfect drive along Oklahoma's scenic routes. We travel around the state and go to different antique stores and vintage stores. And who doesn't love to do that? We're headed to Tulsa for a little antiquing coming up. Plus the Oklahoma Haven that has visitors coming from all over the world. Uh, Washington State, Canada, uh, Alberta area and Vancouver, Maine, uh, Maine uh, Minnesota, um, all over who, California. What they're coming to see and how you can get in on all the action coming up right here on Discover Oklahoma. Trip to a theme park for a family of four, around $4,000. Trip to a southern beach, around $2,300. Camping with your family any place you want to go this weekend, not even 10% of the cost of those other trips. Floyd's RV in Norman is a business born 45 years ago out of our family's passion for camping. Let us show you how inexpensive family fun can be. Here's an example. Right now, get a new Passport 2250 RV for just $189 a month. Floyd's RV in Norman, making family fun affordable. Sweet when the wind comes right behind the rain. We know we belong to the land. And the land we belong to is grand. To where we stay. I am being We're only saying you're doing fine, Oklahoma. 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 Come see for yourself. Welcome back to Discover Oklahoma, coming to you from P-Bar Farms just outside of Weatherford. And if you love pumpkins and corn mazes, this is the place to be. It sure is, but if antiques are more along your line, then Julie Chen takes us to a place in Tulsa that you're going to want to check out. Jamie and Mike Hollowell are modern day treasure hunters. We love to look and search and dig and find. They even found love at a garage sale. Yes, pretty much. On our first date, we went out for lunch, and then on our way home, we saw a garage sale sign. So we were like, oh, whip a U-turn. We're going to go to a garage sale. And that was kind of like the beginning of a new life. Now the Hollowells give new life to old things. The couple runs Mike's Mantiques and the old pink truck, a his and hers antique store along historic Route 66 in Tulsa. We've got the guy stuff on this side, um, and my wife has uh, Kind of the other side. We we're both we're all in the same shop and same business, but um, we have uh, a little more of the girly stuff on the other side. On the Mantique side, you'll find motorcycle parts, hubcaps, oil and gas memorabilia, and more. Guy stuff, a lot of fun stuff. We don't do a lot of flowers and doilies. Mike leaves that to Jamie's old pink truck. Well, you'd find more handmade jewelry, and I do make. Uh, custom made jewelry from old antique typewriter keys and you know furs and kitchen items things like that. The antiques here come from all over. Jamie and Mike attend garage sales, estate sales, yard sales, you name it. They both started collecting as kids growing up in Tulsa. I've always loved bicycles and motorcycles and cars and things like that and just finding the treasure just out looking it's just a lot of fun to Kind of the hunt is the fun part of it. Each piece has a story. And then when we pass it on to somebody else, we get to share that story. So it's kind of a legacy that lives on. We've bought a little bit of everything from both sides. Stephanie and Jack Martin are regular customers and avid antiquers. We travel around the state and go to different antique stores and vintage stores. So it's really cool to have a, a really awesome place right here in Tulsa that we can stop in every week and they're their uh, inventory changes almost every day it seems like they get new stuff in and so we can come in once a week and find new stuff that we just love. And customers tell us the antiques here are affordable. You go to some places they're almost like collectors and collector prices and um, you know stuff is reasonably priced you know you, you can almost feel like you're getting a deal on things here you know um, it, it's not just trying to make as much as they can on things, you know, they want to pass things along. It's cheap artwork, for it the is. most part. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's cool artwork. Yeah. It's, it's unique, you know, yeah. you're not going to see this in everybody yeah. else's home. Mike's Mantiques and the old pink truck is a fairly new business you'll find along historic Route 66. 
the Hollowells look forward to a long future here selling pieces of the past. We're really proud of our store. It's become our life work and our passion. What makes us different is my wife Jamie and I run this shop together and you can find us here every day. And we like to remember everybody's name, shake their hands, smile, share stories with them, invite them into our home, so to speak. In Tulsa, I'm Julie Chin, Discovering Oklahoma. There's so many great places to check out in our state. You can read all about it in a free copy of the Oklahoma Travel Guide. Getting yours is easy and free. Just log on to our website, travelok.com, and click on Request Free Brochures. When you lived in Oklahoma your entire life, you may not realize just how many international visitors we get right here. Really, it shouldn't be any surprise that people from overseas want to come and explore our great state. I've always wanted to come to America to a ranch, always. Um, I just had this romantic idea of doors and lodges and cowboys and it's, it's all true, it's like in the movies. Up next, a trip to a gorgeous guest ranch and an experience like no other. Plus, from superstars to just good old regular folks, find out why everyone's eating at Tally's in Tulsa when Discover Oklahoma continues. All right, sports fans, it's game time at the Built Ford Tough Sales event. And when it comes to trucks, stats don't lie. F-150 with EcoBoost has smash mouth power with efficiency. And with best-in-class payload, boom, F-150 hauls in the Hail Mary. And here's a stat, pal. F-Series has been America's truck for 37 straight years. And that's a dynasty, baby. Get up to 8750 total savings or 0% financing for 60 months on F-150 at your Oklahoma Ford dealer, the best in Oklahoma. It's 3 p.m. For 50 million kids across America, school's out. And for a third of these kids, they're out on their own. Out with nowhere to go and nothing to do. But every afternoon is a chance to change America's future. All you have to do is open the door. It's time to support the Boys and Girls Clubs. Great futures start here. Trip to a theme park for a family of four, around $4,000. Trip to a southern beach, around $2,300. Camping with your family any place you want to go this weekend, not even 10% of the cost of those other trips. Floyd's RV in Norman is a business born 45 years ago out of our family's passion for camping. Let us show you how inexpensive family fun can be. Here's an example. Right now, get a new Passport 2250 RV for just $189 a month. Floyd's RV in Norman, making family fun affordable. Welcome back to Discover Oklahoma, coming to you from just outside Weatherford at P-Bar Farms. You know, people love to hear tales about this part of our state, western Oklahoma. Absolutely, and it's those images that really attract visitors from all over the world. And recently I had a chance to spend some time with a group of travelers who were really into a western theme and a side of creative arts. It was on a trip to Scotland that good friends Island Guest Ranch owner Jordy White and UK-based artist Rebecca Micklebar came up with the idea of an equine art retreat that would also involve fellow artist Tony O'Connor. We did um, quite a lot of research. We went on quite a lot of sites to see if we could find any, anything like this anywhere else um, all over the world, and we couldn't find um, anything um, which was specifically tailored towards equine and um, art. And um, we did, we spoke to Tony, we got Tony to put out some feelers and see if there was anything that he had ever heard of before. The response was incredible and artists from all over responded. Washington State, Canada, uh, Alberta area and Vancouver, Maine, uh, Maine uh, Minnesota, um, all over, who, California. We had a lady from, uh, well, from outside of Edmond. And then for October, we have people coming in from Scotland and from England as well. And they were all there because they were fans of and wanted to be mentored by this gentleman, artist in residence and famed equine artist, Tony O'Connor. Just don't get a sense of the scale of the place until you're here, but um, yeah, I, I, I was very well. Uh, pleased with the response that it got uh, online and I've always wanted to go to America to a ranch, always. Um, I just had this romantic idea of doors and lodges and cowboys and it's, it's all true, it's like in the movies but, but different, slightly different. Like, you know, but <laughs> but it's, yeah, um, I think it really works. 
Staying at the Island Guest Ranch, these talented artists were treated to a variety of activities, but the real excitement, at least for me, was twofold, watching these artists work, and secondly, simply enjoying the beauty of these magnificent horses. Their spirit, watching them approach, was like poetry in motion. I believe that the only way you can truly get to be able to draw horses is to observe it. And if you have horses at home, you're going to be working with them or riding out with them. You're not going to be sitting in front of them, observing them. You know, this is a, a great opportunity for a lot of people, for a whole lot of horses to come over in different colors and, and just, just different style horse that we have from Europe anyway, like, you know, so it's, um, yeah, it's just an experience. And I think if, if you get a chance to observe them in life, you, you're, that'll automatically translate into your paintings anyway. Capturing these amazing creatures, whether through a camera lens or with pencils, is an amazing process, one in which you are bathed in its peaceful beauty. To see the artist's intense focus and then their talent kick into action was in itself a gift. I'd like to do some sketches on here, but obviously it's just gestural, just get some lines because horses are quite mobile and they don't really stand for the poses that I like to do and everything. So I, I think it's a good opportunity to tr get photographic reference to do some quick sketches and use that back in a nice, comfortable, clean studio then as well. Like, you know, as most artists will testify, like that's what they like to do. Space, light and a seat. Probably good coffee and do their work from there. Like. On the way back, much like a trail ride returning to camp after the day's adventures, stories generating laughter and camaraderie were on the agenda. A fun ending to a peaceful day on the Island Guest Ranch. You can plan a stay at the Island Guest Ranch, but the Artists in Residence program is limited to just a few times per year. Find out more on our website, TravelOK.com. You know, a good old-fashioned working ranch is a great place to work up a big appetite. Of course, for us, just a simple road trip will get us hungry. You know, people ask me that all the time, what's good on the menu? It's really hard to tell, but chicken fried steak, you cannot beat it. Where to get that chicken fried steak and a whole menu of other mouth-watering dishes coming up right here on Discover Oklahoma. Great travel tips anytime. Like Discover Oklahoma on Facebook and follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Listen up, sports fans. If you drive a truck, you know it's all about stats. And at the Built Ford Tough Sales event, we've got the numbers right here. Ford Super Duty, best in class horsepower and max towing capacity. That's how you punch it right up the gut now. And here's another stat, folks. F-Series has been America's best-selling truck for 37 straight years. That's called the Dynasty, baby. During the Built Ford Tough Sales event, get up to 5,000 cash back on Super Duty at your Oklahoma Ford dealer, the best in Oklahoma. Spin down the plane And the waving wheat can sure smell sweet when the wind comes <laughs> right behind the rain oh, Oklahoma every night, my honey lazy night Sit alone and talk And watch a hawk Making lazy circles in the sky <laughs> We know we belong to the land And the land we belong to is grand And when we say <laughs> Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Okay. Oklahoma. Come see for yourself. You forgot the honey lamb. <laughs> Welcome back to Discover Oklahoma. We're coming to you from just right off of Route 66 at the Pebar Ranch in Hydro. You know, right along the Mother Road, just about any stretch in our state, you can find some of the best food in the country. In fact, Jason Grubbs made a stop at Tally's Good Food Cafe in Tulsa, and when you go there, well, that's exactly what you're going to get, is a big plate full of very good food. Yeah, I've lived in this area for my whole life, and we've been coming here for probably, gosh, 20 years, so. That's the case for a lot of folks who eat at Tally's Good Food Cafe along Old Route 66 in Tulsa. Young and old, regulars and first-timers. I will get people from Europe, from Italy, France, Germany traveling Route 66, and Tally's Cafe is on their map, a place to visit. 
Dalia Lamy says you might even find yourself eating next to the famous. Garth, Danica Patrick, Tony Stewart, they've all stopped in. Recently, the U.S. Speaker of the House showed up for breakfast. Bum, here's the picture. A little blurry because the girl was kind of nervous. Cody Sumner comes in about every three days. He's always trying something different. So you've literally tried everything on the menu? Literally, yes. The Mediterranean omelet is his current favorite. Followed by the Lebanese burger. Ask anyone who comes in on a regular basis, and they'll be happy to tell you what to try. Oh, wow. Be honest, I am a breakfast guy, whether it's breakfast, lunch, or dinner. So I'm a two by two or a three by three. I love the breakfast. The ribeye. What about you? so far. Even Tally has his favorites. You know, people ask me that all the time, what's good on the menu? It's really hard to tell, but chicken fried steak, you cannot beat it. No matter what you order here, it is going to be a big serving, especially when it comes to these cinnamon rolls. Look at the size of this thing. While you'll find all the classics, like big greasy burgers and hand-breaded boneless chicken, you'll also notice quite a few healthy choices. Oh, and did I mention, Tally's got a gym and juice bar right across the street. See, this way you don't feel bad. You come here and eat. You get a little fatter, then I send you across the street to work out. <laughs> All right, so we got our bellies full. Came across the street to Tally's gym. I'm working out with my buddy Smiley here. He gets to walk. He's got me running for some reason. We're working it off. Working up cinnamon roll, right? <laughs> we had plenty of that. <laughs> Tally's been in the restaurant business since he was about 19 years old. It was his dream to have his very own place. He got that chance in 1987. With just $17 in his pocket and a loan from the bank, he opened up for business. It's a chance you take it in life and, and you work hard, you succeed, and here I am. Janice Arnold is still here too. Back in the mid 90s, she would stop in all the time for breakfast after her overnight hospital shift. And finally one day I said, I'm tired of working nights, can I have a job? 18 years later, <laughs> I'm still here. <laughs> one thing you'll notice in this classic diner is that everyone is treated like family. Just the, the people that come in from local, the local area, they've been coming in here so long, now we're watching their kids have kids because we've been here so long. So it, it's an amazing place to work. It's all like family. It's wonderful. Uh, area. I love this community right here. My customers, they're my friends, and I'm going to be here for a long time. If you want to explore all the different diners and restaurants Discover Oklahoma loves, you need a copy of our dining guide. They are easy to get. Just go to our website, travelok.com, and click on Request Free Brochures. All right, coming up next week on Discover Oklahoma, it is time to go ghost hunting. We're getting spooked on a five-acre farm complete with a haunted barn, and you'll want to find out where that is before Halloween. And if you just have to get out on the water one last time before it turns really cold, we've got your ticket to ride. It's all right here next Saturday night on Discover Oklahoma. So until next time, remember, there's always something to discover in Oklahoma! Production vehicle provided by the Oklahoma Ford Dealers, official partner of the Oklahoma Tourism and Recreation Department.